All right. Hello and welcome back, everyone. Good day. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. Good, good, uh, whatever time of day it is, wherever it is that you are. Welcome back to uh, Random Heathen Ramblings, a Midgard Musings podcast. My name's Jesse, and I'll be your host today, as always. Um, before we get you know, into today's episode and talking about some things, I do want to um, get on here and apologize to everyone for the horrible technical difficulties and interruptions that we had, you know, last week. Um, most of the episode was trash because of the audio issues. Um, and the, the, the bad part about it, right, is like the best part of the episode I felt was the part that got um, corrupted. The file was corrupted. So we were talking um, in last week's episode about uh, Harold the Ruthless. The, uh, the funny thing, and we'll just sum up real before we jump into the episode uh, for today, is you know, the guy uh, in the sagas used birds as like flying fireballs to set a city ablaze. Um, and by doing so, he was able to conquer the city. And it's a really neat uh, story. You can read more about it. Um, if you go back to last week's podcast, you won't be able to hear me talk about it, but there is a link to that uh, information that you can, you know, go ahead and find. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in um, to today's episode. Here we go. All right, folks, there was our intro. Um, once again, hail and welcome back. My name is Jesse. Um, this is Random Heathen Ramblings Podcast. So whatever podcast platform that you are listening on, um, I highly encourage you to please upvote it, favorite it. Um, if the podcast listening platform uh, provides you the opportunity or offers you the, uh, the suggestion to, um, you know, support the podcast, monetarily speaking, uh, feel free to do so. You can also check the show notes um, for the link tree link for all the other ways that you can support it. Um, and a very special, a very special shout out to my YouTube channel members who are getting this um, video podcast opportunity. Now, for those of you that do want to quickly see the video version of the podcast episode and determine if that's something that you want to see long term, um, these podcast videos are premiered um, early Thursday mornings when, when the podcast comes out. You know, so if you're sitting at your desk or watching videos on your phone on a Thursday morning, you can uh, watch the premiere and be a part of it there. After the premiere though, it goes strictly to the members only vault. So if you ever wanna, if you missed the video and you wanna go back to watch it after it premieres, you're gonna have to become a channel member. Um, otherwise, you can just stick to the listening versions on Spotify, on Anchor, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, um, and any of the other podcast listening platforms that this is being distributed on. So you've got that option. If you wanna call in and be featured um, you know, here on the podcast as well, you can always call into the Midgard Musings hotline. That phone number is available 24 seven anywhere in the world and that number is uh, 615-671-9832 i was uh i put the wrong number <laughs> in the chat not the chat but in the uh, in the sh in the last episode when i was talking they hey, call in this number and i probably gave somebody's phone number so uh an actual person's phone number so i'm sorry in advance to anybody that may have gotten those calls trying to get through to midgard musings and if you did last week calling you're not featured on this week's uh, podcast episode. That's probably my fault. But um, the phone number is public on my social media um, platforms. Again, it's 615-671-9832. Call in, leave a voicemail. Let me know what you guys are thinking about, what your thoughts are on any specific topic. Um, you know, share your thoughts about just stuff in general. Um, and if you have questions or, or whatever, I'd love to have your voice heard. Uh, we'll feature you here on the podcast and see what it is that you have to say. Um, 
So we are uh, fresh into the first full week of the month of September over here in uh, the United States. And uh, that means that we just um, got done with our Labor Day weekend. So I hope everybody that's listening and watching uh, that does and did uh, get a chance to um, enjoy their time off or downtime with their friends, family, and loved ones, that you all had a safe and enjoyable Labor Day weekend. I'll uh, go into a little bit about what mine was uh, because it was actually pretty cool. Um, you know, so I was off on uh, last Friday and I didn't come back to work until Tuesday. Um, and at the time of this podcast, it is Monday night. So I pre-record these things. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so yesterday, um, which would be Sunday. Um, so on Sunday, the, uh, oh man, what was that date? The 4th, 5th? Yeah, I guess it'd be the 5th. So on Sunday, the 5th, um, it started just like any other Sunday for me. I was laying in bed, you know, kind of sleeping in, just resting. And I get a call from a buddy of mine. Um, and he says, Hey man, what are you doing today? I said, Nothing really. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any um, plans or, or prior engagements scheduled for anything. So um, he said, well, cool. Um, care if I swing by? He had some freshly racked mead. Um, and yes, he is a um, amateur or uh, amateur almost sounds like you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> um, but he is a non-professional mead maker, small batch mead maker. You know what I mean? He, uh, he makes his mead in small batches, you know, gallon or so at the time, a few gallons at a time. He's not um, looking into it, at, at least at this juncture, as, as like a big production. It's just, you know, friends, family and stuff like that. And he's been doing it now for several years. And it's been a really interesting journey that I've kind of uh, kind of been with him on doing this. Now, just as a, I could just, uh, for you guys that are listening and watching, this guy, a friend of mine, he is not pagan. He is not heathen. Um, but he is the most pagan uh, non-heathen that I know, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and he makes a damn good batch of mead. Um, very simple, just, you know, the three basic ingredients that everybody uh, is familiar with of what makes mead, mead, uh, which is just water, uh, honey, and yeast. Um, but over the years, he's experimented with different things. He's tried different honeys, different yeasts, different water even, you know, like spring water, distilled water, tap water, that sort of thing. Um, and he's got it down over the years to a very specific um, ingredients that he uses. And in about six weeks, he's got beautiful, drinkable mead. A um, little bit cloudy, um, but that usually has to do with the kind of yeast I think that you uh, use. So it, his his you know his um, his his final. Um, product after he you know is finished with its uh sitting and after he racks it and everything it still has a little bit of a, a cloudiness to it but i don't mind that i don't want a, a crystal clear looking mead anyway but it has it's a beautiful golden color um very very drinkable i mean it's so smooth guys the alcohol content probably not more than you know in like the 10 or 12 maybe 14 percent at the most he didn't uh he didn't um i guess proof it before he brought uh, my sample over when I say sample I mean he brought me a whole quart <laughs> a whole 750 milliliters worth and uh, but it's really good man it's really good I said Gene if you just stick with this you know base you know if you just stick with this basic uh, process what you're doing uh, you can tweak it you can fla add flavors or whatever but this is this is the sweet spot right here no pun intended it's meat um, but this is definitely the sweet spot um, and it creeps up on you too right like it's man it's just it's so good um, and after about six weeks, it gets great. So, the, you know, after several months, it's, it's even better. Um, but he's got another batch coming uh, to me here in a, another month or so, sometime in October. And I'm really looking forward to that. So anyway, he uh, he called me and he said, you know, I thought I'd bring you some mead and just hang out and whatever. So he did. Um, later that afternoon, he came by and we just, you know, sat out on the porch and had some mead and drank a couple of beers. And then, then... What had happened was, <laughs> um, what had happened was, um, he said, uh, "You got any other plans for the rest of the day?" You know, we've been sitting there for a couple hours, just you know, shooting the breeze and and chatting things up. And he said, uh, "You got any other plans for the day?" I said, 
No, you know, I mean, my wife had a, a cookout with her cousin and some friends that she was going to, and I didn't have anything else planned. So he said, all right, well, I'm kidnapping you. I'm kidnapping you and we're going someplace. I don't know where exactly, but got a couple of places we're gonna go. So we ended up just wandering a bit um, with a very loose plan of, of what to do. We ended up at a, a, a friend of his who he'd been telling me about <clears throat> in uh, South Nashville and hung out there for a little bit, met his friend. I met his friend for the first time, shared a beer whatever over there with him. And then you guys know Dingo. Um, if you don't, he's been on the podcast here a number of times. He's been on the channel. He is my Gothi. He is a very near and dear friend of mine. He is one of the few people who I call my brother. And he is, uh, I said, hey, you know, wherever we, where, where we were located, um, my buddy and I, and he's also another brother. Um, even though he's not heathen, he is still, to me, my brother due to his actions, due to his deeds, the, the worth that he's shown me over the years and stuff. We've known each other for about five years now. <clears throat> um, so anyway, I said, hey, you know, and he knows Dingo as well. I said, hey, uh, let's see if Dingo's home and go over there and uh, hang out with him for a bit. You know, we had some we had some extra beers in the cooler in the back of his truck. And let's just go over there and, and see what he's doing. So Dingo was home. He said, yeah, come on by. Walking up to this, walking up to his uh, apartment, and I could hear on the other side of the door, I could hear r guitar riffs. So I knew he was in there jamming, um, but I didn't know that he wasn't alone, and that he had another guest over. And opened the door, and I was like, "Hey, cool, you know, uh, this guy Corey uh, is here as well, and I've met Corey before, and um, they were in there jamming, you know, uh, playing some." some doomy bluesy doom riffs man um getting that you know labor day weekend uh, riffage going on and so gene's behind me you know we walk in and i start introducing Corey to gene and it was like the most crazy thing because gene looks at him and <laughs> i forget what the exact words that he said was he might have said Corey you son of a bitch or Corey you whatever he, he made some sort of expletive and then Corey looked at him and said basically kind of the same thing it turns out that these two guys have known each other longer than I've known Corey which has only been about you know the last few months and longer than Dingo's known Corey which has been for the last several years or, or however long but Gene and him know each other way longer than the two of us do and it was like this unexpected unplanned uh, reunion man and then so um, one thing led to another we're in there you know just uh, having a couple of drinks and um, you know so then Corey and, and Dingo start playing some songs and apparently one of the songs that they start playing was something that Gene already knew and he starts singing along and there's a video of it out there um, and it's like it's it's the most uh, it's the most like probably well, I'm actually going to give you guys a chance to listen to it because it's probably the most raw and like nothing fancy about it. You know what I'm saying? Nothing fancy about it. Um, but it is it is just I don't know. I think it was so touching and so like I was thrilled. I was so excited and thrilled um, to be able to hear this. So I want you guys to uh, to listen to this. Let me let me pause the background stuff going on for right now and uh this is Like, if you guys could be there, you know, if you could be there and like, it sounds, it sounds so raw and it sounds so, I mean, it is, it's just, it's raw. There's nothing, it's in an apartment and it's just, 
it's as visceral of a jam session as you could ha as you could have. So any musicians out here listening, watching, whatever. I mean, just. And Gene was actually like, Gene was actually um, helping sing along. Like, he's like, I remember this one. And they were playing and he was singing and then, and then Corey jumps in and everything. It was just like, it, it felt like I was right in the middle of history being written because the, the, the amazing part of it all was that, you know, we didn't plan on this. We didn't plan that, like, we didn't plan to head over to Dingo's. Nobody knew that, you know, we didn't know that Corey was going to be there. Nobody had any plans to make this happen, but it did. And it was like probably one of the, just the greatest experiences that I've had with my friends and my brothers in, in probably ever, man. Like, I mean, there's, there's very few times that I can think of that stand out as so impactful to me. And I was talking to uh, Gene that later that night when we had left um, Dingo's and we were heading back, he was dropping me back off at my place. And, um, you know, and I, and I told him, I said, this was, cause I was just, I was reeling in it, man. I was sitting there, he, we were driving back, we were listening to music and I was just sitting there kind of quiet. He's like, you're not saying much, man, you all right? And I'm like, I'm just absorbing everything, man. I'm, I'm, I'm absorbing everything that happened today um, and tonight. And it's, it's got me thinking about, you know, in my beliefs, how we shape time and how we do things to affect weird, you know? And by that, I mean, like, first of all, it started with like Gene calling me, you know what I mean? And I told him, I said, you know, had you not called me, had you not had the thought to call me, this wouldn't have started. And then had I not answered the phone, had I been asleep or had I ignored your call, we wouldn't have been here. You would have done something. He would have done something himself. And it may or may not have been the same thing that would have turned out, but chances are it would have been totally different and would have been right for him at that moment. But because of my actions, because of my decision to pick up the phone while I was still half asleep and go, hey, what's up? You know, that shaped the decision to head over to Dingo's and, and, and see Corey and jam out and just, you know, have a really good time. And it what was really interesting to me is, is some of the conversation that um, Gene and I had before all this. Like when he first came over, we were over just, you know, sitting over mead, sipping mead and, and talking and having a smoke or whatever. Uh, well, he vapes and I was smoking my tobacco pipe, but we both vape. So we were just, you know, puffing away and talking and, you know, the way guys do. And uh, he... Uh, we, we start talking about, you know, some like philosophical, metaphysical stuff, you know, really, really mentally stimulating thing. We were talking about the concept of time and 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 the illusion of time. I mean, which, you know, you can go off on all kinds of tangents when it comes to that. But I uh, I mentioned to him, I said, you know, it's there's this uh, ripple effect or the butterfly effect, you know, the, the, the beat of a butterfly's wings will cause a you know, typhoon halfway around the world, that sort of thing, or the ripple effect where, you know, the ripples that come out from the moment that that uh, rock is dropped into a stream or into a lake, the ripple effect as it, as it expands out. So anyway, I, I, saw, I told him, I said, you know, a lot of people will, will say that the ripple effect starts when the water comes in, con when the rock comes in contact with the water or when that object comes in contact with the water. Because as soon as the as soon as impact is made, that's when the ripple is caused, and that's where the ripple effect begins. I said, but I contest, and I go a step further and say that the the ripple effect starts at the time that the object is thought to be dropped. Like if I'm holding the rock, right? The ripple effect starts when I decide to let go and release my grasp on that object or that rock. That's when the ripple effect starts. And then Gene's like, well, let's go a step even further than that. And that the ripple of that, that, that it starts when that rock was first, you know, formed by the earth and in nature. And, it, and I was like, dude, this is nuts. Like you just, you, you go off on, and, and at the time, like I said, like we were not inebriated at any 
uh, to any extent. We had, had shared, like I said, half of that quart of mead between the two of us, so, and a beer or two. So we were well within our sobriety, um, so it wasn't like, you know, an altered state of mind that, that was causing us to think of these things, but we were definitely stimulated to be within our right frame of mind or within a, I guess right is, the rel- is a relative term, but in a, in a coherent uh, state of mind that uh, we, you know, could uh, we, we, that we could come up with these things. And then it got me thinking later on, like fast forward to the end of the day and I start thinking back on that conversation. I go, that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about, man. Like it's, it's, it's that what happens in the world, what happens in time is up to us. We are, we are shapers of weird as it were. Like we shape our own destiny. We shape our own fates along the way by the decisions that we make and don't make because uh, without those actions being taken, then it's, you know, things are going to happen however they're going to happen, but we have a direct impact on what we want to happen and how we want it to happen by our actions and by our decisions. Um, and sometimes those decisions, you know, you don't always think. You you kind of um, you get... Uh, Because he, uh, you know, you get you get to, to, to the um, to the point of shoot, I lost my train of thought. You uh, <laughs> random even ramblings. You get um, you don't always have that that luxury of, of thinking in advance because you're act on the moment. Is I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um. So, anywho, anywho, that was that was what um, that was what that was what really made my weekend, my Labor Day weekend. So, how was your weekend? I'm responding to a message, guys. Um, We'll get back into this here in just a second. But anyways, um, what else? Hope you guys like the kind of the different format. I've I've decided to not change screens or whatever for the intro, and also adding some um, background noise, background things to uh, add a little bit of a. Ambiance, ambiance. Um, so I saw this thing um, that I thought I'd talk about. That uh, I, I thought I'd talk about this thing. It was a it was a post that I saw last week after the last podcast episode went up, um, and I don't know the validity of what I'm about to read. I don't know the source of it all, but I thought it was interesting. Um, and it's on a Facebook uh, page that I follow called Valhalla's Gate, which is actually a uh, a brick and mortar store in Clarksville, Tennessee, I believe. And they share some pretty neat um, things, not just their own uh products and stuff but they share some neat you know posts from other pages and i saw this post that they put up and it's um it's from the crafty kitchen witch page um on facebook i'll leave a a link in the show notes and down in the description if you guys want to check it out and offer your thoughts if you guys are on those platforms as well um but these are four native american indian as they call them spirituality laws now again i don't know what validity there is to this or where these laws like where this information came from but it it it, it gives you pause for thought and i thought it would be neat to share here and talk about its you know relation to heathenry as it were um so these four native american uh indian spirituality laws or these native american spirituality laws again not knowing from which of any specific tribes um but they basically say that nothing happens for no reason 
in life. So um, I think it's a great thing to talk about given what I just told you guys about with regards to the uh, the events of this past weekend and um, how my friends and my brothers, we all, you know, got together and it was, you know, due to the, the decisions that one's made and all that kind of stuff. So realizing that, you know, things happen um, for a reason and that nothing happens for no reason, it's easy to um, kind of look at what's happening around us and be um, thankful and appreciative and, and look to continue that sort of, um, I guess, behavior. All right, so the first law says that the person you meet is the right one. That is that no one comes into your lives by accident. All the people around us uh, who we interact with stand for something, either to educate us or to help us in our situation. And I think that that has some bearing. I think that, you know, the encounters that we have with people um, depending on the kind of lives that you live um, you know uh, I have interactions with people on a day to day basis in my professional life um, because of my job and because of my responsibilities that I carry out um, at my job you know, and to say that uh, every single person that I meet a new person that I meet um, I, or I can say that at least the people that I have met up to this point have or I have allowed uh, meeting them and knowing them work in some way for me, you know, whether it be, hey, that's a good example, that's I can learn something or that's kind of something I want to shun away from, shy away from um, that thing or the other. Um, I've, I've tried to make them, you know, wake, make it work in my benefit. And then if they're it's if it's good to know them and to, to be um, familiar with them, if if I can learn something from them is what can I bring to the table and how can they potentially uh, get benefit out of knowing me. Um, and I feel like that has something to some sort of connection or correlation, at least with our concepts as heathens of the gifting cycle and reciprocation and uh, at least on a loose base level. There's more to it than that. There's more to it, um, the gifting cycle than just, oh, let's give a gift for the sake of giving a gift. If there, there's more um, metaphysical reasons behind it, especially when we talk about gifting um, to the gods and what that means through sacrifice and all this kind of stuff. But suffice it to say, I found something similar in my worldview when I read this and thought, hey, worth mentioning, right? Uh, the second law states what happens is the only thing that can happen. Um, so <laughs> it goes on to say that nothing but absolutely nothing of what happens to us could have been different. Not even the most insignificant details. You know, there just isn't, you know, if I hadn't, if I had done it differently, uh, it would have been different. Um, because what happens is the only thing that can happen and needs to happen. So we learn our lessons to get ahead to, to, you know, uh, every situation that happens to us is, is a lesson. Um, life's app, you know, everything about they're, what they're saying is that everything that happens, um, in life is absolutely perfect for what it is. Even when we ourselves as individuals pretend or, or perhaps resist, um, or we let our egos get in the way and we don't want to accept it you know so and i thought a little bit and I, and I was thinking a little bit about that one too and i go well how does that fit into heathenry you know how does that fit into my worldview does it fit into my worldview is there anything similar um to this that that i can experience in my heathenry and i thought well i don't necessarily believe in ultimate fate you know and that everything is predestined and, and there's nothing that I can do to change it because obviously there is or like I just mentioned before there's there's decisions that we make and uh, actions that we take that will and do alter time and and alter the the events 
uh, that, that we in, experience in time, right? So, yes, I feel that everything that happens is, is perfect in that sense and that it's up to us to allow it to work for our benefit or find the good, uh, sit, you know, the, the benefit out of it or find the good out of it. Um, even when it comes to some of the most, you know, difficult things, um, some of the most tragic things, uh, perhaps, um, that we may want to, own, that, we, that we as, a, as individuals may only be able to focus on the, the negative parts of it. We're talking, you know, things like, you know, tragic losses um, of loved ones, maybe um, our health situation, our financial situation, our relationship situations, things that can just really hit us. Uh, when we're down and and other things that uh, people over you know, the world struggle with various uh, forms of uh, mental illness, whether it be anxiety, uh, depression, PTSD, um, you know, schizophrenic, bipolar, all these various things that I am by no means an expert on that, you know, there's there, there things happen and we can, if we want to find the good or find something good about the situation even if it's what we feel is like a bad situation um so that's kind of where i um, but as far as like the heathen worldview of it and or how it fits into my heathen worldview is that you know um luck comes to us from our deeds like we we, we acquire and we accrue luck over time we've also got luck that we've inherited from our ancestors and everything that happened up to those points um were good and and were perfect in in that moment and the decision to act on those things that got us to where we are through our own deeds and through the deeds of our ancestors were um were perfect in their own right as well so something to maybe think about uh the third law says that every moment when something starts is the right time so everything starts in their right time um, and no sooner, no later. I think of uh, that famous or infamous, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings quote when Gandalf arrives to Bilbo's party and he's told that he's he's late. You know, and Gandalf says, well, the wizard is never late. He arrives precisely when he means to. Um, kind of along those lines, you know, um, when we're ready for something new, uh, to happen in our lives when, when, when something is, is ready to happen um, it's already there to begin with and we're just now reaching that point um, in that perception of time you know kind of like uh, going back to the uh, going back to the events of, of, of uh, last night on Sunday night I should say uh, with my buddy Gene we had been talking about this sort of an excursion this sort of an adventure where he you know comes down from where he lives um and more or less kidnaps me right hey i'm just going to take you we're going to go we're not going to have a real set of plans to do anything or any idea we're just going to go we've been talking about it or he'd been talking to it uh t talking to it and about it for for quite some time and it's, and it's never happened and yesterday it happened uh, but he didn't come down to the burrow and plan on on anything like this it just sort of happened organically and it happened um in the moment and it was the right time and i'm confident that it was the right time because of the great things that you know we were able to experience with not just him and i as, as friends and as, and as brothers of, of our own uh benefits but of sharing those sorts of things with others that are near and dear to us as well you know um so I firmly believe that has has something to do with any walk of life, really. But I can definitely see, um, you know, the connection and, and and how I perceive the world and my heathenry as it being something that kind of fits along really well with that. And then the final or fourth law says that what's over is over, and it's that simple, I guess. Uh, when something ends in our life, it serves. For our development at that point um and that's why it's better to let things go and move forward rather than to be you know uh stuck on 
it and, and stuck on the past because it's um, it's happened now and it's served its purpose. Right? Um, we can now move forward bestowed uh, on the experience that we've now gained through this thing that is now over. You know? Um, and I definitely feel that uh, you know, action is better than inaction. You don't want to stay stagnant for, for too long. Sometimes the action to take is to pause and to wait, you know, uh, for instance, you know, the decision to run into, you know, moving traffic is a bad decision and it will end your life or, or maim your life. And uh, so it's best to wait and pause for a clearing before you try to navigate the, uh, the path in, in front of you. So I'm not saying that, you know, stopping and not doing anything is is a poor decision. I'm just saying that sometimes the right thing to do is to just pause and wait for the clearing for the thing to come. But once that thing has come and once you have done that thing, you know, it's like to me, it's like, OK, well, I've already crossed the road. There's no sense in running backwards and seeing what would happen if I tried it a different way or if I ran a little faster or slower or waited a little bit longer or shorter. You know, there's no sense in that. I've already made that leap. I've already made that movement. It already has happened, and now it's over, and it's behind me. So the only way to move now is forward. Now, it may not always seem quite so simple in life um, with some things, you know, because we have other people in our lives that we are involved with and, and that we share and tie weird with, you know. So just because you want to be, you know, just because something is, is over with and done, um, at that moment, there may be other things further down the road that we don't know about yet and based on decisions that we make or they make can sometimes impact that. But I look at, I look at, um, as an example, you know, I look at, um, people who we've known for so many years, maybe friends from high school, friends from college, friends from our childhood who were friends and dear to us at the time. And then over the years, for whatever reason, uh, communication has dropped and there is no more connection to, to anything, right? They don't talk to us anymore. Even if we try to talk to them, they ignore us. Um, and that can hurt, you know? Um, we lose friends over time because of whatever. Either their lives get busy, our lives get busy. Maybe you said something about somebody or something about something and they misunderstood it or they read it a certain way and now they don't like you anymore, or whatever the case may be. Um, and then it's over, right? Like that quote, friendship, that that connection, that uh, that, that that thing that you had that you thought was valuable is now it's it's over, and um, that can hurt, you know. Especially when we didn't think we've done anything wrong, but once again, it's over. And dwelling on the what ifs or whys of things you know well, why did they do this i don't understand why they got to be this way why can't we be still why can't we still be friends you know what i mean uh sometimes man it's just best to cut your losses and understand that hey um every moment um well what's over is over and what and what happens now um is the only thing that can happen and what was the other one um yeah, what happens is the only thing that can happen. Every moment when something starts is the right time. And what's over is over, right? So sometimes when it's over, man, it's there's no reason to read into it anymore. And it can be hard, right? It can be really hard for us to accept that for whatever reason, the person that we want to continue to be friends with or connected with, and this is just an example. I think it's probably the most relatable example because I know I'm one of them, right? You ever, you ever wake up one morning or one day and you go searching through your timelines on your social media, whether you're scrolling through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, and you're like, hey, I haven't seen that person's posts or whatever in a, in a really long time, you know? Well, you look that person up and you realize that they've either um, unfriended you, blocked you, um whatever they're no longer they don't want to be a part of your life anymore um maybe we've done that to other people and that's there's a reason for it and you may not always know 
what that reason is or why. But what's over is over. And focus on what's ahead of us. Onward and upward, as they say, you know? But um, anyway, that's uh, that was really cool. I think, I think there's something to learn, even if you're not heathen, right? Uh, you may just be pagan in general, or you may not be either. You may not have any pagan uh, beliefs or practices. You may... Um, whatever is whatever the case is agnostic atheist uh, christian buddhist i don't care who everybody that's listening um check the show notes uh, or if you're watching this go down to the description and check it out because you know i think there's uh, i think there's some validity v- validity <laughs> that's not a word some validity um to what it's saying here um so yeah check it out let us know what you think either call in 615-671-9832. Um, or you can send an email, midgardmusingstn at gmail.com. You can uh, you can at me on Twitter. You can if you DM me on Instagram, I probably won't see it because I only share content to Instagram through my Facebook. So get, whether email me, uh, direct message me on Twitter or at me on Twitter or send me a direct message on Facebook. Any one of those three. Email, Facebook, Twitter. Um, send me in your thoughts. And we'd love to feature you on the podcast. Even if you don't want to have your voice heard, you just want to have your written voice, right? Your written words heard. Um, send in some ideas to the podcast. Always also looking for some guests, you know? Um, hope you guys and gals out here like the new format and um enjoy it so that's going to conclude uh today's episode of random heathen ramblings i hope you all enjoyed it if you did once again please uh upvote or follow the podcast in any way that uh, your platform promotes and suggests for you to do and if you want to you know see the the um video version then become a member on midgard musings to, to go back and watch the, the video versions anytime you so so choose so um thank you all so much for your ongoing and constant support uh the show notes is going to contain the link tree link for all the other ways that you can support midgard musings you can become a patron on patreon you can buy my merchandise on the teespring store uh or the spring store as they call it now um anything else that you see there um your support is always greatly appreciated so thanks for tuning in and listening today hope you all enjoyed it enjoy the rest of your day enjoy the rest of your week and until next time hail stay healthy we'll talk to you next time bye-bye